Warning to all newcomers or people who are unfamiliar with my channel. I do commentary. If you don't like commentary, go ahead and leave. Close the video, go somewhere else. If you do like commentary, welcome. I make these videos just for my fans and that's it. So, yeah, and my fans like commentary because that's what I've always done. So, this this is an Elatrion's hammer solo run. It's not done to for skip. It's not done to show off any skill or anything like that. It's just like a crazy run I recorded somewhere during my little solstice uh while uh during my little solstice between uh you know crunch time with college and uh and uh you know Christmas time. It was just one of the more interesting runs I had, but not exactly one of the fastest or the most uh, efficient in terms of killing this guy. Yeah, basically when I'm by myself playing Monster Hunter, this is all I do. Just practice soloing a lot, Ron. And I've gotten relatively good at it. I'm just not super duper good like some of the crazy motherfuckers on Monster Hunter, like Muffin, or Xavier, or Percy, peop other people I know. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, what can I say about this? Well, it's a Latron. He kind of reminds me of Cell because he's got those two spiky things poking up from his head. You know, like they're concealing some kind of something or other. I don't know. He he makes me think a little bit of Cell, but that's because that's also because I've been playing a lot of uh, Dra Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi. See that? That what I did right there? That's a turnaround super pound. It's a very very difficult technique to like pull off, but if you can master the timing for it, that's basically the key to getting the fastest hammer solo runs. On top of you, you know, using heroics and or two times fortify if you're really crazy. And here Air KOs are always fun. It just makes you feel like a badass when you knock a monster out of the sky. Especially this fucker, considering how much he jumps around like a, like he's hyped up on crack. So yeah. The timing and the placement for that turn around, turning super pound is kind of finicky. Like, you have to be right on the mark. It's not that difficult because when he turns around, he's always centered and facing you. But, you know, if you screw up... I mean, it's easy to screw up if you don't have exactly the right distance placed between the two of you. And something else I want to note about Elatron, for those of you who are, who play Monster Hunter but aren't very experienced with it, you notice, like, if you look closely, yeah, you notice how he had that lightning around his horn and now just as soon as I bashed his head in, he, like, leapt back. You know, and started yelping in pain and shit like that. Yeah, when he charges up, uh, I'm, I'll actually mention that later in the video. That happens, but yeah. Some people might think it's a fluke or a hack that I'm pulling this off, but it's not. I don't. I don't hack ever. I don't hack. I. The only time I've ever considered hacking is for legitimate talismans. Like, that's basically it. I, I've... I haven't actually hacked them, 
I've considered hacking them. But I haven't hacked them. It's just... When you're a hacker, you lose all credibility as a player. And it's just not... Like, like if you were in Japan and you hacked, apparently Gale told me this. Gale, a.k.a. Billy Bob Joe, J-H-O. Yes, that's his YouTube channel. la -dee da If you want to see a more, uh, you know, competent run of a hammer solo, you know, go ahead and... Go ahead and look at his channel. But, uh, what was I talking about? Shit. Oh, yeah, Gail told me, Gail told me. What did he tell me? Fuck. Gail told me that, uh... Ah, never mind. What you're about to see here, notice how he's still got the lightning charged up around his horns after he did the little headbang and flail technique. Uh, if you don't knock it out of him, in a, like soon, in, if you don't knock it out of him within a certain time limit, he'll do that and then he'll go into flight mode and everything turns into piss. And you don't want that to happen. So you basically got to flash bomb until he comes back. But it's not, it's not unmanageable, as long as you know what to do and you've got flash bombs and other materials. I'm still trying to remember what Gale told me. Gale told me something. Oh yeah, he told me in Japan, uh, if you... If you, like, they're really serious about hacking in games in Japan. Like, if you ever hack, um, like, if, like, if you hack a game and you get caught in Japan, uh, apparently one guy actually got banned till the year 9,999. His entire account. And that right there was a demo of a fail spin. Horn break. I was actually planning on doing a super pound, but sometimes, unfortunately, your thumb's still pushing on the control stick. So. Yeah, you'll go into the. You'll go into a spin and screw everything up. Except then, when you get. In cases like those, when you get lucky. And they're very rare. Oh my god, I hate that fireball. It just covers such a wide proximity. Or should I say radius or range? Whatever. Point is, he's always putting it where you don't want to be. Where, where you don't want it to be. A.K.A. right next to you. Oh yeah, Gale also told me that, uh, apparently his old site, GameFAQs, is about to release an HR 999 code. Like, literally, a code for Ocarina that will allow people to hack into the game and give the, instantly give themselves HR 999. Am I the only one that thinks that's utterly retarded? I mean... That's like sub-clusting. Clusting is already bad enough, because then you're, sac you're sucking the enjoyment out of the game for yourself. And basically, basically you're unable to do anything. If you clust... 
I'm going to assume that you don't know how to do anything else aside from speedruns. And therefore, you're not a really good player at all. And I don't want to play with you. Because, like, what are you going to do once you... What are you, what are you going to do if all you do is clust? You won't know how to do anything else or, or experience any of the other fun parts about this game. It's just pathetic how they do that. Like, that's what I dislike the most about clusters. Or cluster, not clusters. I won't talk about the people. I dislike clustering as a concept because the people that... Because when people follow it, they're sucking the enjoyment of the game out. Like, for themselves and sometimes for others. But I mean, as long as you know how to master a melee weapon, you have at least a little... Like, well, not master, but... I'm very finicky about when I say mastering a melee weapon. Like, be competent at a certain weapon. That's what I'm saying. And even then, you know, my standards are way higher than your average shows. And being competent with a weapon entails a lot more than just, you know... Hit it till it dies, don't get hit. I mean, like, pinpointing weak spots, precision breaks, tail cuts, stuff like that. Like, if you want to know my standards for a great sword user, <laughs> um, try cutting Devil Joe, like, World Eater Devil Joe's tail off with nothing but a great sword. I'm not talking about an axe. That's pussying out. Axe is way too axe is way too easy for breaking tails. I'm talking about I'm talking about actually timing yourself to cut Devil Joe World Eater Devil Joe's tail off by yourself. No gunning support. No anything else. No support from anyone else. It took me 40 fucking minutes to do it. And I did it on a whim. Like, I could probably do it a lot better now. But, you know, I haven't tried because I usually use World Eater for, uh... Yeah, I usually use World Eater for, like... Like, there's two events I speedrun. World Eater is one of them, and I do that for talisman farming. You know, because I want better talismans. I still don't even have a crit draw, critical draw god talisman or an attack god talisman or anything or anything like well I've got a couple guard plus seven plus ten is what I mean it's like I don't have any of the significant god talismans aside from speed sharpening which really annoys me cause you know I've been farming talismans I've been farming talismans for the past, oh, 500 HR or so. So, yeah, it gets, gets, gets a little irritating. So, yeah, I farm World Eater for talismans, and I also speedrun, uh, Fiery Sky's Frozen Fields for HR. To an extent. But I don't clust. I have never once clustered. Like, I've had people come up to me randomly out of nowhere asking me if I clust because I have high HR. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to be related to you. I actually, you know, try to do something else in the, in the game. You know, getting HR... Getting your HR really high used to be some kind of mark of honor, like some kind of testament to your skill and ability to play the game as a whole. But now people are just thinking, oh, you clustered too? And even then, with that code that game FAQs are released, it'll be the same thing, like, oh, you use the code too? And unfortunately, no, I'm not a cheater. I don't. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna use the code. I'm already this far, I might as well work my way up legitimately, quote unquote, for the last few talismans. Even then. I mean, speedrunning and Barilos. That's what I call Fiery Skies Frozen Fields. It's called Barilos or Barilos, whatever you want to call it. It's still, uh. Uh, it's still borderline cheating to me, but, you know, that's what I re reward myself with since most of the time I'm either, like, I don't play with people online very often because it's hard to find people near my skill level. And when I do find people near my skill level, like, the runs are so fast, they're, so, they're just horrendously boring. Like, we have five-minute Heroes Wanted runs. It's... Just crazy. Yeah, usually it's just me, or me and Icarus, or some other small group of people. But it's not like a full, you know, decked-out group of Helios users or something like that. I mean, it's fu it's still fun though, but you know, two man doesn't get you very, doesn't go very fast. It's still relatively efficient though. Like I've great sorted uh, Jagia, and with two people, it only takes me like 30 minutes. I mean, me I mean, I am a nerd about this game. I'll be perfectly honest. I am very hardcore, and I like, and I'm very, very picky about um, who I play with, and you know, actually have. And I like the game, so I have like having actual skill at it, which is why I do stuff like this. You know, this is fun to me because it's. It's fun when I actually, you know, do well, but... <laughs> this is just one of those bad runs. Oh yeah, cause... One of the reasons for this, like, part of it is just my experience. I'm not that good, I'm not like Muffin or Gale or Percy, like I said before. But, I'm not... Bad at hammering Elatron. I've done my fair share of them. Like, I've killed about 325 of them. Probably about 100 soloing. Well, not a hundred, more like fifty. Um. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've probably killed about fifty of them soloing, and you know, the best time that I've got hammer soloing this guy is twenty-four thirty-nine. I think this runs about 28 minutes or so, so it's kind of average on my scale. Like anything below 30 is crappy, between 25 and 30 is okay, but I usually have, but I usually make about 25. But this run, I, w I actually recorded, and uh, thing about that is, um, when I record with the hop hog. It doesn't record in widescreen, and it doesn't display on my TV in widescreen. So, I'm actually, like, the video you're seeing is the resolution of the actual game, like, as I see it through the Wii, when, it, when it's displayed in widescreen format. But, when I played it on the Hapog, it kind of squeezed the actual video down. It, it like squished it to use half the screen and made it kind of difficult for me to actually for me to actually play. And let's be fair, this does require a fair bit of pre a precision. You know, it's not it's not easy by any it's not very easy by any means, but 
you know, I like to think people... I like I like to show people that I actually have some capability at the game. And I mean, I am very capable with Greatsword in comparison to a lot of users. In fact, I don't... I still don't know very many people who are, you know, better overall at using the Greatsword than me. I think I've met just, like, Gale's pretty good, but I think the only one I've met who's close or equal uh, is X, and X plays with Gale. You'll notice. You'll know. Uh, you'll know who he is if you actually check out Billy Bob Joe's channel. So... Uh, let's see. Yeah, what more to talk about? Yeah, you'll see later on in this video, I actually... Re I actually... Uh... Switch the aspect ratio back to uh, stand like its standard recorded format. Like that's like you'll see it in a bit. I'll talk about it. But yeah, the thing about hammer soloing a lot round is um, it's it gets very boring once you learn how to super pound, because then it's just a matter of getting it down to practice, of like practicing and getting it down pat, because, and that's really actually quite monotonous and boring, which is why hammer soloing can be so difficult. That normally wouldn't have killed me, but he had to be in a lava pit. Ugh. And that's... That, that happens when you're with Alatrion. Sometimes he will get you in a really good combo. <laughs> Even if you're with a group. Little moment of silence. For my death. All right, now back to the action. Yeah. The monotony of trying to hit his head constantly with a hammer, it gets very, very repetitive. But that's kind of what being skilled at Monster Hunter is about. It's about breaking... Uh, you know, melee techniques down to a process, or gunning techniques down to a process. That's also something... That's also somewhat what speedruns are like, you know, for gunners. Now, I am no gunner, I'll admit. I... I stink at gun, and I... I'm, I'm really, really not... You know... Good. Whoa. Whoosh. Things get a little hairy when that happens. <laughs> Cause you get your directions messed up because your characters turn around. That, that gets pretty interesting, but uh. Yeah. I forget what I was talking about. Yeah, I'm no gunner, and I'm also absolutely no good with any of the non-precision weapons in the game. Like, I, I just hate using them. I used to use the longsword religiously, but now I, I never, ever use a longsword. At all. It's just boring and spammy. Like, literally, all you do is hammer the R button, and that's it. Uh, switch axe. Hate the switch axe. Never want to use the switch axe again. Oh yeah, now here, this is what I had to play with. 
Actually, it was actually, it was a little bit more squished than that. Like, literally, I had about half the screen to myself. But, so if you can imagine controlling a game, being used to widescreen, and then getting squished down to that, it, it gets, it really messes with your head. Especially when you're trying to do something very precision-based like this. I mean, you might not get it, but yeah, I have my Wii. I actually have my Wii, Wii set to my Wii screen display is actually set to display in widescreen right now because I had troubles. I literally played through Twilight Princess. Like, if any of you have widescreen TVs and you and your Wii is outputting at standard and you played not Twilight Princess, but uh, you played uh, Skyward Sword. You'll notice you only have, like, half the screen to yourself. Man, I love that slowdown. So badass. Ugh. Well... That's that. That's the solo. Yeah, if you're playing Twilight Princess, you'll notice your screen's like squished vertically. Like it's shrunk to a theatrical release ratio and you're and it's only using a, using up half of your widescreen TV. What you got to do is go to your Wii settings, go to screen and then, you know, have it output at widescreen, which is what you're seeing now. So that's what's, uh... Yeah, that was just a crazy Alatra and Hammer solo. I'm hoping to get my my time down to 22. Because after that, you know, I'll feel relatively competent at hammering him. And then I'll move on to... Actually... You know... I I'm gonna move on to practicing, like, Heroic's Great Sword solos. I haven't gotten very far with that. I've, I've done it, like, once. I have non-Heroic's... Great sword. Uh, I have I've beaten Alatra on solo with a non heroics great sword run in 42 minutes. That was a pain in the ass. Um, but uh, yeah, with heroics I could get a lot faster. So what? Uh, and I'm hoping to do more... Maybe I'll do more record... Like, random online recordings, just as filler episodes, because... Well, I don't even spend that much time on Monster Hunter Online, except when, you know, events are up, but... Or when friends are on. Really depends. Well, that's it for this episode. This has been Captain Vulgarity. Uh, that was the crazy Alatra on Hammer solo run. You know, just... Random shit happening. Bunch of stuff you don't normally see. For my fans, because... It's just past the holidays and I feel I should put something up. Later, folks!